Welcome to the Hylas Meet the Designer webinar um, featuring our guest, uh, Herman Frez. Uh, I'd like to start by very quickly making some introductions. Uh, my name is Kevin Wensley. I'm the US-based sales director for Hylas Yachts. Um, and I also want to take a moment right now to thank all of you that have tuned in for, for coming on board with us on this webinar. Uh, thank you for being here. We're obviously glad to have you here. Um, the primary focus of today's webinar will be about the recently launched Hyla 60. Uh, we're targeting the whole thing to be about 45 minutes in terms of duration, uh, and we want it to be as interactive as possible. So if you have questions, please don't hesitate to look at that Q&A button that you have on your screen, send us in a question, uh, and we'll be addressing the questions towards the back end of the webinar. Um, if we don't get to your questions in, in this session, then we're certainly going to be following up with you at a later date uh, with an email or telephone if, that's, um, if, if you left that information when you registered. The webinar is being recorded uh, and we'll be sending everybody that's registered a link so they can use it for future reference or for sharing with either Hylas fans or Frayers fans. Um, we have joining me uh, on the Hylas team uh, today on the panel, we have Andy Huang, our CEO. Uh, he's based in Taiwan and oversees our manufacturing facility at the Queen Long Yard. Uh, hello, Andy. Hi, everybody. Uh, we have Peggy Huang. Uh, she's our chief operations officer, also our market di marketing director based uh, in the US. And she oversees all our marketing initiatives here, including this webinar. So thank you very much for pulling it together, uh, Peggy, and welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, and then we have Christian Shaw, and Christian is our Program and Service Director. And uh, Christian's role is to take care of all the commissioning of the yachts as they come into the US, make sure there's a smooth transition to new ownership, takes care of some of the training. Uh, he also handles any warranty that concerns that come up following the delivery of the yachts. Uh, and he is continuously available for questions and answers uh, during the lifetime of ownership and I guess and during the Christian's lifetime himself. <laughs> and of course, uh, sorry Christian, welcome. <laughs> uh, and of course, our special guest, uh, we have Herman Frez. Uh, and uh, Herman is the CEO and Principal Designer of Frez Naval Architects and D Engineering. So welcome, Herman. Oh, nice to be uh, with you. Thank you. Uh, it's very unlikely that anyone listening uh, isn't already familiar with some of the work that you have done or, or, or doing for us. Um, but if I may, I'm just going to very quickly paraphrase your own bio that you have on your own website. Um, are you okay with that? So, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Hamon. So the, the yacht design dynasty of Frere's started in the 1920s with your father, uh, and he was mostly serving the South American market. Uh, you actually took the helm in the early 70s, uh, and, act, and if you don't mind me saying, you've become a bit of a legend in your own lifetime. Uh, your designs have won pretty much all the major yacht racing trophies that are worth winning. And to name a handful would be a Whitbread, the Transpac, Maxi Worlds, even some Louis Vuitton stuff. I, I have to say, I haven't seen an America's Cup link to you guys yet, but I'm sure that's, that's coming soon. Watch this space. Uh, you have your son, Manny, has joined the, the business, and he has offices in Milan. Uh, in Italy, uh, and I'm sure that you know, it's, it's been very challenging times for the last couple of weeks, but when we were speaking earlier, it's, it's good to know that everybody's well over there. Uh, he's had some pretty amazing uh, uh, results and success in his own right, uh, making yachts go fast, and he's worked with a couple of uh, successful Louis Vuitton campaigns, and I think even a Volvo campaign. Um, you also have a great reputation for working with private owners, uh, in both power and uh, sale, uh, and fortunately for us, you also work for uh, well work with a, a handful of semi custom builders like Hylas. Uh, and I was reading an article actually by one of your catamaran uh, clients, who who described you as a famous magician. And I think I think it's fair to say that you've brought more than just a little bit of magic to Hylas. So thank you for that, and thank you for being here. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so so Herman, I'd like I'd like to start by asking. Back in the mid '80s was when you first started working uh, with Hylas. So can you remember much about what the first yacht, and the design of, I think it was the 44 was the first one, and who you were? Yes, I remember quite well uh, the 34. 44 was the, the first design I did, which I considered to be a very nice boat. And uh, I didn't know very much about Islas, but uh, I went to Taiwan to Kaohsiung and meet with Gino and spend some days at the yard. Dino and the, and the family, you know, right. those, those days. It's quite, it was quite interesting. I had a good time in Kaohsiung. I, I went to the botanical garden and I went swimming, which was very unusual because people were not allowed to, to go to the sea. But uh, <laughs> when I got out of the water, everybody applauded, which I thought it was fine. I, I, and, I'm sure. uh, I'm sure. And, and then we, we continue working at the distance. And time Gino, I think, came to see us, and, uh, and uh, Juan, he came to Argentina. But in general, we work through correspondence and uh, with very good results. Mm. I found that the yard was very conscious while building the boats. They, were, they wanted to do a good job. They, continuously consulting with us and um, the results have been very good. There are a lot of boats floating around. There are a lot of boats floating around. In fact, I think there's 300, is it 310, Andy? Yes. 310 that you've designed that are floating around. Yeah, um, I have to check, I have to check where I got all the royalties. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, I, correct me. I, I, sorry, I think there's 200. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, no, you, you touched on two great things there, um, Hamon. One was um, the fact that you got to go to Taiwan to visit the family, to, to see Gino and Joseph and the yard, because that's, that's a really big part of, of um, what clients get to do in the build development. So having that very close communication there is important. But I, I have had the good fortune to watch the development of the 60 and the communication that goes on between you and Andy and the and your team and, and the use of the internet and 3D designs and all that information is flowing so quickly. I just can't imagine how you managed to pull that off in the middle in the mid 80s. That's crazy. Yeah, well, um, we have a good team. Some of the people have been with me for more than 40 years, we, we are all getting of age. But um, I think we, we, we got a lot of attention and good response from the, from the builder, which is not always the case. And uh, so we, we were satisfied that everything was done according to, to plans and, and, and as planned. Right, so I'm gonna, if I may, I'm just gonna jump ahead a little bit, a, a, a couple of decades because Andy uh, spent a little bit of time with you uh, in Argentina uh, as part of his induction into the whole process. And I, and I notice when I see you guys talking to each other or communicating, there seems to be a very strong relationship. And that must have been founded somewhere, which I guess was Andy. Yes, Andy yeah. was, a welcome, was very welcome here. It was good to have him. Um, he met with all with a team here, we have some some of the guys, there are some others. Um, it was a good experience. I, I hope it was good for him, as good for him as it was with, for us. It's, uh, it's, it's nice when you can uh, develop a relationship, personal relationship through conversations and, and uh, work rather than only on the correspondence. So it was good to have Andy here. I'm glad that he made the effort to come from California, I think. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. So um, it was back in 2013 and uh, I just finished university and uh, my parents asked me, you know, if I, if I wanted to be, kind of be in the business and I thought, hmm, yeah, I, I really do. And 
you know, what would be the first step to, to, to be prepared. And so I, you know, I thought of going to the, uh, asking Mr. Ferris if I can go do an internship and then off I went and it was all, you know, everything was in Spanish, even though I kind of, I went to school in, in California, but I didn't quite learn as much Spanish, uh, back in California. So it was new for me, uh, when I was in Argentina. Uh, I, I did learn a great deal from uh, Mr. Ferris and he, all his team um, and the whole design process, how, how it works and you know what are the things that we need to watch out for and just seeing how boats are turning up and the, the, the 3D software that, and uh, AutoCAD uh, drawings that they were able to, to produce, that's just fascinating and really amazing uh, to me. And I happened to have a chance to sail with uh, Mr. Ferris. Uh, it was one afternoon that uh, you asked me if I have time. And I said, yeah. And you said, let's go sailing. So it was really, really cool uh, to be able to, and, and my honor to be sailing with you um, in, in Buenos Aires. Yeah, I guess we ran aground that day. <laughs> <laughs> We sail in the river, which is very shallow water. We were sailing on a, on a, on a, an old side by my father. It was called Sonny. It was just uh, rebuilt for wow. for racing in Europe on the classic fleet. So actually, uh, you you mentioned a, a, the, a design by uh, your father, um, uh, Peggy. Can we go back to that picture of um, uh, I think it's uh, Fjord Three. That, that's a, a picture, of, I think it's you and your family, right? Come on. Yes, this is a sailing last year in Cannes on the, on the classic uh, on Regat Royale for the classic fleet. And I was sailing with it <coughs> from the, the, the man on the left is Manny, then myself, then Herman, my grandson, and uh, Pablo, our crew. Uh, this is a boat that my father built for the first PA Rio race in 1947. And uh, it was my love when I was a kid, right. when I was five or six. I loved that boat. But, and but it was lent to me by the present owner, uh, Scott, Scott Perry, which is one of the vice presidents of World Sailing. And uh, well, we had a lot of fun together, cool. remembering. So, so we're looking at four generations. If you include the boat, which your father designed, that's four generations of Frères. Right. And, and, it, and it looks like the workload is being appropriately distributed. So you're driving, so you, you're guiding. Man yes. is doing the fine tune, and it looks like Herman, the youngest, is doing the hard, heavy lifting. The physical work, yes. <laughs> yeah, nice one. Okay, so let's, um, let's move on a little bit then, if I may. I want to do a, a quick kind of warp speed review of the evolution of the of the Frere's um, models that Hylas have been building over the years. So I think, Peggy, if we start, yeah, with the, this pie chart. So what we're looking at here is basically the number of boats sold of different sizes. So we know we started with the 44 back in the mid 80s. That was hugely successful. Uh, it was mostly developed for the charter market. Um, then we went through a, a, a phase of, we went to the 42, the 51, the 45, but then we hit on the 46. And the 46 was the start of what uh, we think of as the, the semi-custom built yachts. In fact, we've actually got a 46 in build right now. Um, that was very successful. Then folks said, we want a bigger yacht. And so we went to the 54, which ultimately became the 56 with a slight modification. And then in recent years, we moved to the, the 70 and the 63. So if we look at all those models in, in, in images of them, Peggy, if you want to just click through to, there we go. So here we have the 44 uh, moving up into the 46. And then the next slide would be the... Yeah. Uh... Obviously, some designs were more successful than others. And the 44 was one of my favorites. The 46 also. And the 54 was very successful. Yep. Oh. So, 
what, where I'm going with that question, go back, to, go to the next slide, Peggy. So where I'm going with this question is if you look at all these models, there's some, there's some very clear characteristics. So it, you know, to my semi-trained eye, I look at them and I go, oh, wow, beautiful center cockpit. You've got the raised coach roof over to the mast. It's a cutter rig. Um, you can't see it here in the, in the picture, but we've got that classic Hylas transom steps. Um, and the, they, these yachts are all very classically what I would call Hylas. Um, and then we have the 60. So before we move on to the 60, we're, we're, in, in terms of your brief here, we, we, is there anything that you kind of think, I want to keep this classically Hylas and is there a trademark that you think makes it classically Hylas? Um, well, it has to go, it goes along with my, my trade and my, my way of working. And uh, the initial models were yeah, marked traditional. The brief was asked for that. And, uh, and uh, it, was, it was okay. We, we just follow the, the, the line, the family look and the line. Mm -hmm. On the 60, I don't know if because we, uh, we tame it Andy here or, or why, but um, I feel it was time to do something a, a little more uh, modern and, uh, and according to the times these days and I have more freedom. I, I was given more, much more freedom on the design brief. So I did something I liked it, and, and I thought it was, I think it's good. It's a, board, it's a modern hull with a lot of power built into it, a uh, very powerful back end, uh, clean deck, a uh, clean deck, uh, rather high freeboard. So the superstructure is, is uh, minimalistic. Uh, it has two options over the, <coughs> on, on the layout, uh, owner forward or owner aft. So there are two different cockpits and uh, this is done in combination. The hull is done in combination with the twin rudders, which goes well with the with the powerful back end, uh, mm -hmm. and it has several advantages. You know? It has better control. It gives a much positive control, much more positive control, and also has the advantage of being shallow, mm -hmm. not needing much draft for the for the performance. What? But we'll get we'll get a little we'll get into a little bit more detail of the design of the sixty in just a, in just a, in a moment. Come on, um, yeah. but I do take take an opportunity um, for to, to bring in someone that I know has pretty much sailed every model that's out there of the Hylas, which is Christian. So Christian, you you've been with Hylas I think over fifteen years. I'm not sure exactly how long, uh, and you've sailed on on all the models I think that that Herman's designed. Um, is is there anything that you particularly like about the evolution of, of these yachts, or that, is there, are, are there any characteristics that you look for in a Hylas, so or you could say to people, this is what to expect? Um, oh, oh, sorry. Well, that, that that was a question for Christian, actually. Come on, stand by. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, um, first, uh, um, you know, I, I I love these boats, and they are different. Each one is, has has some unique qualities. Um, but they have they have some things that are that are in common, you know. And the main thing is is um, ocean worthiness. They they perform well um, uh, in in calm waters, but they also do great in in heavy seas. And I particularly appreciate that on a passage. And uh, once you get used to that, um, it's hard to go to a, a lighter displacement boat um, when you're dealing with uh, with a passage because you know it's going to be. Uh, a challenge at times. So that's that's probably the thing they have most in common. One of the things I like about the various models is that they do evolve and, and usually they evolve in, in interesting and nice ways. And the 60 is kind of, you know, the, the newest evolution and it's maybe several steps forward. So I'm just just starting to appreciate all the, the, the things I'm discovering about the 60 because we really haven't had it out much in, in many conditions yet. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes, but I'm sure it'll be very fun and interesting. So, so Herman, if I, the, another thing that I'm, I'm often asked, or it comes up in discussion, is how the relationship between the, the, the designer and the builder works. 
Um, clearly, in the case of Hylas, you have a very strong bond with the family that, that are running the yard, which is great. But at, at, you, know, you, you start off by creating a drawing. And at some point, we at the yard start building. And with a new model, how, how does that work? So there you are, you're, you're, you're drawing the lines, you're thinking about what the boat's going to look like. And then how much, how much freedom you, and in this instance, you were giving a lot of freedom, I believe, for, for coming up with the, the design for the 60. But how much freedom does the builder have to, to make modifications as a semi-custom builder? Well, obviously it's an interaction and, and there is a brief that comes from the yard that we have to meet. And uh, we also have the freedom to propose new solutions and new ideas or to show what the, what the options or possibilities are in the design. So I would say it's a teamwork, it's part of the teamwork we, we normally do with the, with the builder. You also have to maintain a distance from other clients and uh, be sure that uh, the Islas line of yachts have its own identity and characteristics. And, 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 and I know just from seeing how it's worked that, that there is a lot of communication and technology is allowing us and your team to, uh, to be communicating very regularly in terms of working up uh, any, if, if there's any challenges in the build situation or any questions, you guys seem to be super responsive and able to give us direction as required. So thank you for that. I'm sure Andy appreciates that. Yes, and, and with, with the 3D software, it's it made everything so much easier and more precise. Okay, so let's move, let's move then on to the 60 and talk a little bit about that specifically. So come on, you, you, uh, historically it, it had always been we needed something like this, but a bit bigger. And you worked to those briefs. And then Andy coming in as a, as a new generation and, and, and a bit of a, an inspiration for the, for, or, or an injection of inspiration for the, the Hylas brand said to you, hey, Mr. Frez, where do you think the future lies a Hylas and what would you do with a 60? And I believe he did give you, like you mentioned, a bit of freedom. Uh, and, and you came up with something that's incredibly beautiful. Um, do, you want, do, you, do you want to give us a little bit of an insight as to maybe some thoughts or things that, that, that were at the back of your mind as you were creating this beautiful object? Well, um, starting from the hull, uh, we, we carry on a, a research and development program continuously and the hulls have been involved, the hull shapes have been evolving slowly, but surely. And we have this new family of uh, canoe bodies with a very powerful back end, which is, uh, works very well uh, regarding the balance and the performance of the boat. It, it, it makes the boat uh, be longer, um, appear longer in the while functioning uh, than the than the normal that the traditional boats are. Uh, this has the advantage also. These new hulls have the advantage of uh, having added uh, volume in the back, and uh, and they come along with a new look. Uh, this uh, high freeboard and uh, low superstructure deck. Uh, it's very simple and functional. Easy, uh, the boat has also uh, a, a rig with a sweat back spreaders and a wide base, which uh, diminishes the compression of, on the structure, and, and a non-overlapping head sails, which are much easier to handle and very efficient. And, uh, so it's, uh, it's, the whole thing is worse together. You cannot pick up one end, the one item and separate from the rest. So oh. the, the new hull with the twin rudders and the shallow rudder draft, uh, the simple rig is easy to handle, the bow speed, the good place for the anchor, good place to set up a light weather reaching sail and uh, a clean deck with plenty of 
uh, free areas free of uh, clutter. Mm -hmm. She she's she 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 is beautifully laid out in terms of the the, the clean decks and the sweeping lines. And still she still has that the shear line that I think people refer to as as a kind of a frazzy shear line. So it, it still sweeps a little, not as much as other models, but it still sweeps. Uh, the the comment you made there about a powerful back end or the, the, the stern of the boat. Um, so having the wide stern isn't just about getting more space inside the yacht. It's actually about allowing the boat to perform better. Is that right? Yes. Yes. It's about getting uh, better speeds in, in all conditions. More uh, sailing length. That's what, it, what it's called. For, for a given overall length, for a given, given size, you have a maximum sailing length. And also when the boat heals, it's, uh, it's very well balanced. It works as, uh, as a, the actual waterline plane gets narrower and, uh, and very symmetric. So that reduces the drag and, uh, it, and makes for a better balance at the helm. The, the old the old boats in comparison were are dis, more distorted as as they heal. This boat is is designed to sail at uh, twenty degrees angle, eighteen twenty degree angle, uh, yeah. for uh, its maximum uh, performance. So I, I've had the good fortune of sailing this yacht a couple of times, and I have to say you're absolutely right that when the when the yacht starts to heal. The rudder still has a really good bite because it's the twin rudders and she and, and I mean this is a compliment that the boat steers like a dinghy. She she just she she's so responsive. It's it's great. And you don't and you don't lose bite as the boat's healing. As the yacht heals, that that lumen rudder seems to get in deeper, you get the control. You don't seem to have the rounding up that I've experienced with other styles. Right. That's what it's supposed to do. But it does it does it well. <laughs> the we've got we've got this new look. We've got the clean deck. We've got the sweeping lines. We've got something that looks amazing. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the sail plan in just a second. Um, but with this new design, we we were thinking about the interior. At Hylas, we were thinking, well, what are we going to do about the interior? And so we went to the folks at Hot Labs, who are also based in Milan, Italy, where Manny is. Uh, and asked them to to uh, come up with what they thought the inside should look. So was there much discussion between uh, Hot Labs and uh, Frez, or how did, how did that relationship work out? Uh, they were very nice, and they kept me informed of their work, and we had a good conversations and discussions, and uh, I welcomed the, the new, fresh, fresh appearance and design. There's much more design on this layout than uh, on this interior than on previous boats where they were more traditional. Um, so it's, it's a good, it was a good synergy. Uh, we, we worked well together. I appreciate the work. I mean, I didn't, I didn't work with, for them, but uh, I appreciate their work and uh, their, their relationship. I, I'm, I'm very pleased with the end result. Good. So, so, you, so it's fair to say that you like the work that they did. Yes, right. I like the work they did, and uh, I think it's, an, it's a good uh, plus for the for the boat the design. Yeah. Well, well, I personally, I I love it. They've done an amazing amazing job. When she turned up, yeah. right? of course. The, I mean, there may be other uh, people that don't agree with me, but uh, in general, I think it's, it looks very good and. There's very little, there's nothing to criticize of what they've done. It's, it's, it's good design. So, so we have world-class design, thanks to you on the exterior, and we have world-class design and layout on the interior, thanks to Hot Lab. So what a great- It's a good move by, by Andy to hire the Hot Lab. <laughs> Of course, I'm sorry, Andy, didn't mean to, didn't mean to not mention you there. Oh, Completely, no problem. <laughs> clearly with your guidance, boss, yes. <laughs> Um, so anyway, we launched the 60 at the boat show in Miami, as you're aware, uh, Hamon, um, and it was hugely well received.
received by the boat show going public and also the world press. Um, we had a, a great time there and there was just two or three questions that came up time after time. So if you don't mind, I'll just kind of allude to those. One of them was about the sail plan. So traditionally the Hylus is, has been, it's clearly it's a cutter rig, uh, it's a sloop, cutter rig sloop um, with a fairly big overlapping Genoa. 35% uh, is our standard. And the Hyla 60, um, we've actually gone with what you're describing as a very optional stay sail uh, and a Jenny, or it's not even a Jenny, it's, it's basically a working jib at 105%. So my question to you would be, if you took away that stay sail and didn't go with the optional stay sail, do you think you should be carrying a bigger uh, Genoa? No. No, you could carry a, a code zero for reaching in some conditions, but uh, the boat has enough sail area without the overlap. The overlap came from the, is something that came from the old rating rules, where they allow you to have free area, certain area behind the mast, and uh, that's, that's why it was there. It was invented for, by a Swedish Sven Salen for the six meters in Genoa, that's why it's called the Genoa jib. Uh, anyway, the the rig has enough enough power without needing needing any overlapping sail. The overlapping sail is it's not very efficient square foot per square foot of area. Uh, the, this high aspect ratio non overlapping sails jib is much easier to handle, and is very efficient, it's easier to roll up. It has all the advantages and, and um, uh, is the, the way we, we go. The, 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 you mentioned the high aspect ratio so that we've got a pretty tall rig at 91 and a half feet, I think above waterline. Um, and you're absolutely right. The handling of a 105% working jig is, is very easy to do through maneuvers, through tacking. Um, but we still have that stay sail option. So is the stay sail there to add power on a reach, or is the stay sail there more about when things are getting a bit lively and the conditions are deteriorating and the wind's picking up, it's easier to transition from the, 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 the head sail uh, or the forward sail to, to the working jib to a stay sail? What, is it more power or is it ease of handling? No, the, well, uh, the reaching, you, you may try the stay sail. Sometimes it gives you a chance more of speed, sometimes not. The idea of the staysail is to work as a as a heavy weather jib, rather than than, than reefing the, the the Genoa or the forward jib. Mm -hmm. You set up that sail and the boat uh, together with the reef mains is better balanced, and is you don't you save the other sail from being stretched, rolled further, and uh, it's a very sea kindly kind of solution. Uh, sailing solution. Uh, and it's uh, we have a self-tacking staysail, so it's a, it's a joy to handle. Very easy. It is. Uh, absolutely. And I think actually Christian referred to using a, a, the self-tacking thing as being a bit decadent. Like you don't have to work too hard. It's, it's kind of it's cool. Um, the, uh, the other thing to uh, add about the, um, the layup of the, sorry, the, the sail plan would be you, you talk about when you're reaching, you might want to use a code zero, you might want to use a, an asymmetric sail, something like that. So you've done a, an amazing job of integrating the bow sprits into the hull so that we don't actually need a bob stay or a tie rod or anything like that. But you've also got fittings for a code zero and an A sail up forwards, which is super easy to access through the, through the open uh, pulpit. So I guess you're thinking if you're sailing off the wind, you should have a spinnaker or a code zero in light. Yeah. Yeah, right. uh, sailing off the wind, you can use the bowsprit for the spinnaker uh, to tuck the asymmetric sail. Great. Uh, the idea is to facilitate maneuvers and uh, be able to sail shorthanded uh, on, this, uh, on these new boats. You not need a lot of crew. Uh, or do less work, whatever you like. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a lot of folks listening that uh, are. are many couples that sail short-handed lots uh, and they want to know whether or not you think this is a manageable yacht with just two people. 
Sorry, I didn't, I didn't okay. hear you well. And I'm saying that there's, there's going to be a lot of folks listening that sail as couples, and they're wondering whether or not the 60 is too much boat for just a couple to handle. And no, I don't think so. I think uh, these sides give you a very stable platform, and uh, it's not only comfortable, but also it makes uh, the boat easier to handle. I don't. I think this uh, this boat could be very easily. I mean, could be handled by a couple without any problem. Great, and I agree. I mean, I, that, it's what we see where we're working on now. Um, the other, I think you've touched on this already, which the other question I get a lot is um, twin rudders, pros and cons of twin rudders. Uh, I, I was asking you earlier, is, is that a function of design or is that a function of um, performance or both? Any? That's something that comes together with the, with the hull shape. Uh, <clears throat> you cannot do this kind of shape with a single rudder unless you go extremely deep, you have to go to maximum draft because the, the single rudder gets out of the water when the boat heals. Uh, so this is something integrated with a, with a hull shape, a hull design. It's not, it's, it's not a, an arbitrary decision, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an obligation. Right. Uh, it, it works supremely well, and you mentioned that it, it also keep, allows us to go to the shoulder. So even at sixty, yes. well, it, that's the other uh, the added advantage. You get a, a short raft, so you can moor stern two on the docks, so or and you can have an efficient shape with shallow draft with a shallow keel. It, it looks great. Works well. Um, the, uh, the next question that I get asked a lot, when I'm giving people a tour of the deck at boat shows, they're always commenting about the, the, um, the, the uh, camber of the deck up forwards in terms of it's the curvature. And I, I'm often saying this is all about uh, the functionality of moving water off the deck if, if we get green water coming, up, coming across the bow. Um, or maybe it, it helps for walking on the high side, which I, I'm not sure if they're just, is it, in terms of the design, are you thinking functionality or are you thinking something else? Um, well, one of the, the reasons is to have added headroom inside without increasing the freeboard. Uh, the other advantage is the structural. You get a, a very good um, member that works on compression. so. This deck is very strong and, and helps the boat not to bend when you trim the backstay. Uh, it makes for a stronger structure. And uh, yes, yeah, they have other advantages like walking on the weather side and getting rid of the water very quickly. But the main reason is uh, structural and uh, headroom. And maintaining a clean, clean superstructure. Then you get this free, free deck which is very nice for what you can use it for, for whatever you've done, sunbathing or just say being there, walk, walking is easy on that, there's no obstructions. Uh, yes, I, I, the, the teak forward deck on the 60 is very special to be walking about on it. It really does feel great. So, yeah, yeah. And, and the lines of the yacht look amazing and very clean. Um, so you've had huge success, uh, well, you've had huge success in all kinds of things in your business, but um, the question I have for you now would be, if you're designing a racing yacht, then you say to yourself, this yacht obviously needs to go fast and it needs to win races. And the success or otherwise of the, the yacht is presumably a function of performance in terms of do we win races or not? And you do. But when you're designing a yacht that's a performance cruiser that people aren't necessarily going to race, how much of a compromise do you make in terms of your design process about, I might need to give maybe more volume because it's a cruising yacht, or I don't mind if the performance suffers a little bit because I want to make more accommodations of it. Uh, how does that kind of thought process work for you? No, well, I have uh, racing on my DNA and uh, I would not do compromises uh, 
arbitrary compromises. We have a, a function to, to fulfill uh, and we have, we need volume. The board has certain displacement but within the, the parameters of size. Uh, I, I'll try to do the fastest shape I can. And uh, I, I consider that to be part of the pleasure of sailing is a board that reacts well and is, has a normal speed so you're not passed by every neighbor <laughs> on, when you go sailing. Uh, I think I, I do within the, the, the limitations imposed by the conditions are the fastest possible hull shape. Mm -hmm. It also has to be seen kindly. It has to be good under power uh, against uh, the chop. Uh, and it has to be nice. Those are the other conditions. I, I, I think I think you've done done well there, and you're absolutely right. Any 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 two sailboats, as they say, going in the same direction is a race, and I think I think we'd do well on a sixty. Um, so my last before we, before before we go to um, questions that may have come in from people listening in, um, the any anything coming up in the future. Uh, in terms of maybe uh, design or technology or uh, structure or any like advances that you know, people talk about uh, foiling, that kind of thing. Um, is there anything that you think that if Andy comes to you in the next five years and says, hey, hey, come on, we need a, a something, a 52 or something, that you'll be looking to, to say, well, we should try starting to incorporate that into the, <coughs> the development of the, of the brand? Well, there's always something in the lay in the future. Uh, perhaps I uh, could be on the rigs. Uh, a really nice. I mean, a sail is a very inefficient foil. So uh, we had limitations imposed by the rating rules. But uh, what they're doing on the America's Cup today with the twin luff sails is something I I wanted to do 20 years ago to do a better wing, but I don't see that happening on the on the cruising boats yet. People have to get used. They have to digest the the the, the, the evolution. Um, perhaps perhaps we'll be in the rigs, a self-standing mast uh, with more efficient cells. But I don't have the crystal ball that. I and and if you do find one, you I will know it's not going to be very fast. Yeah, very <laughs> quick. Fast, faster is better. So thank, thank you, Herman. Um, so you've said two things that, that I've enjoyed. One is that you admitted to running aground early on, and and there are sailors that either run aground or that just lie, and and also that you you even as a cruising yacht, you're you're chasing speed. Um, and I know when I'm sailing with our clients and owners, we're constantly looking at the. The, uh, the speed to, to see how we're, how we're performing. And uh, I, I think you've given us a yacht that we can really chase um, some good speed in. Uh, at this stage, we're now getting towards the end. Um, any, any questions come in from uh, the audience that we can share with Hamon, uh, Andy? Yep, uh, so there is uh, a couple, couple guys ask about the, uh, the beam, so uh, how does the white beam handle uh, the following seas compared to the earlier models that were not as beamy? Uh, the beam is a, is an, uh, it's a good factor. Uh, I mean, um, it goes well with the, with, the back, with the beamy back end and the twin rudder, so I don't see any. I think it's, 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 it's pretty good in the following sea. No, don't see any problems with it. With that, it's a very good feature. Okay. Uh, and how? How? Uh, so, it, well, will that will will that affect the uh, the different point of sales or uh, uh, downwind, upwind, and reaching? Does it well, make I would any say difference the beam, on, the beam, the beam on the sixty is pretty normal. It's uh, it's very much what we have done on other boats, and there's nothing 
exceptional about it. It's, it's, a, it's a, in relation to the length of the, of the sailing length of the boat, that is, is uh, very moderate. And as I said before, when the boat heals, the, the apparent wing diminishes. The apparent beam, uh, the, the submerged underbody is very slender. I don't know if it's understood or not, <laughs> my explanation. But, uh, but yeah, so as, as the boat heals, the, the, the actual the width of the wetted surface area gets narrower, which allows it to push through the water faster. Is that right? It gets, it gets narrower and very symmetric. Nice. Uh, okay. So I would say this body would be better on a following sea than the, the old models, because it will be less, less dry and good control. So. Thank you, Harm. You heard um, it here, here first, folks. <laughs> so there is another question from uh, uh, Alberto, one of the 63 owners. Uh, can you explain how different will the 60s uh, versus the 63, 63 in terms of sailing? There is not much how different. Uh, the 63 was a uh, it was done prior to the 60, but it's the same family. We, we didn't go to the extreme of needing twin brothers, but uh, it's not, not too different to the 60. It's a fairly good boat. Tell Alberto it's a fairly good boat to 60. <laughs> He's listening. <laughs> okay. Um... Any others? Andy? Oh, yes, there's another good one. Uh, so the, the decision not to have the, uh, the skeg uh, for the rotters, um, you know, obviously the, the blue water market, you know, people tend to um, associate the skeg uh, with, with, you know, the, the being the protections for the rotter itself. And then, um, he said immediately there's a redundancy with the twin rotters, but you know, pros and cons of the skate uh, rotters versus the spade. It's much easier to do a, a rather a, a spade rather that will withstand uh, any any loads, including uh, collisions with the submerged uh, objects than doing a skeg that would do the, support the same loads. And from the hydro, hydrodynamic point of view, the spade rather is, is much better. I, I started half of my career, I insisted on, uh, on skeg rudders uh, just to learn 20 years ago that, uh, that it's better to do a spade rudder. Um, skegs are always weak, uh, it's a weak point weak link on the on the chain. Okay, thank you. And and I think uh, Kevin pointed out the, the turn router, there's always a, a, a redundancy for uh, two uh, autopilot drive and and you can dislink the uh, uh, the, the routers too. You can uh, control just one router too manually as well. So there's there's quite a lot of redundancy for twin brothers, right? Right, right. And, and yes, and so that that comment, uh, I, I, maybe Christian would be able to answer that one. But that so that comment is just about if we have twin rudders and we have an issue with one of the rudders, we disconnect that rudder, and then we have a a second rudder already in place. We don't actually have to go to finding a, yeah. a emergency tiller or anything like that. We just can disconnect the rudders and one works just as well as well not just as well but works well enough uh in isolation so that's great to have yeah. to have that redundancy certainly across yeah. the road, it's great to know that it's there obviously breaking a rudder is always a bad thing because you may get a leak and so forth but uh, at least uh, this this uh bearings are closer to the surface So we're getting, we're getting, I'm trying to keep us on, on a pretty tight time frame here, Andy. Any, any other 
questions that we want to? Well, there are there are a few other questions about uh, where they can get buy Hylus. <laughs> so <laughs> I think we'll answer those later on. <laughs> I think, well, no, I think no, I think if you want to know where to buy a Hylus, you you should answer those questions immediately because that's going to help you and Herman and of course everybody involved in the team. So. <laughs> Um, if you want to learn more about the Frere's Design Hylus, then uh, you can reach out to us. We're available at info at hylusyachts.com. Uh, Peggy's going to put up a, a screen at, at the very end that shows uh, our web address, which is basically hylusyachts.com, so, uh, and a phone number. But because it's being recorded, 239-738-8742, if you just... Give that number a call, you'll get me, and I'll be happy to share any information that folks need. Um, but anyway, so uh, I think, unless there's other questions, uh, I'll just do a quick closing remarks. And thank you, thank you every, are there other questions, Andy, that we wanna address right now? Uh, no, I think that, that that's all for now. Uh, Christian, do you have any questions for Hamon? I know that you've spent a lot of time around his yachts. Any any? Anything you'd like to ask at this stage? I think uh, Christian is mute. Okay. So. Sorry, I, I was mute there. Uh, we have somebody uh, doing some uh, power, power saw work outside. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, uh, one of the great things about um, uh, handing over the boats to uh, new clients is that in many ways, you know, many of our clients, you know, they're realizing their you know, dreams of, you know, leaving the docks and going to explore, explore in the world. And so we get to be part of that and these boats get to be part of that. Um, how does that, did you, how does that um, uh, affect you and your, and your um, feelings of what you do for a living and your contribution to this, the sailing world, knowing that you're kind of opening up uh, these pathways for people to realize their dreams? Sorry, I was, Thinking about something. Else. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, uh, Herman, that uh, that you you are many in many ways are um, you help pe um, people realize their dreams through the designs of these boats, and uh, and I was just wondering if you have any uh, um, feelings about about that and how it how it uh, you know um, if, if there are certain rewards. Well, we we belong to the same family, and uh, I I really have. A lot of satisfaction out of my profession. There's nothing I do rather do in life than designing. And uh, if I can transmit this feeling to the to the other people, it's very rewarding. It's, uh, it's been a good life. Uh, I hope they, they something drops into them. <laughs> yeah. I'll pass on to, to the new clients that uh, not only are um, their dream, dreams being fulfilled, but they're fulfilling your dreams as well. <laughs> uh, yes, Herman, you seem to be fulfilling everybody's dreams here. So for that, we're very grateful. Um, so uh, just some closing remarks. Anybody listening in, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we will be sending you a link that uh, will get you to a recording of this um, webinar. Please feel free to share that with your friends, anybody you think might be interested in Hylas or, of course, uh, in what Herman Frez does. Um, I'm going to save you to last. Andy, thanks so much for staying up late and joining us in Taiwan. Appreciate that. Peggy, no thank, you. Thank, thank you very much for putting this together. Um, uh, Christian, I'm not, yeah, Christian, thank you for, for chiming in. It's good to have you on board as always. I know everybody appreciates your, your being around for training, etc. cetera. Uh, and then of course, Herman, uh, I can't tell you how special it is for us as a team to have you on board doing this with us. We really appreciate the time you've taken. I hope the folks outside uh, listening in uh, get a sense of who you are, the personality that you are, and you clearly care passionately about what you do. And I think that's reflected in the yachts that Tyler's put out. So thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be with you all, Andy and the team. And, uh, I'm here. At your disposal for any time you want. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.